Vision and visibility, the risk of flying blind. Today's flow short topic. Hi, I'm Joshua Barnes, and I am joined by Steve Piera. This is the first of a series of these live streams that Steve and I have been talking about for well for 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 a little while now to just kind of get them going and get them get them setting up. And and what we're trying to do with these is to first raise some awareness about the Value Stream Management Consortium. Um, Steve and I are both are both board members, but Steve has been instrumental from the very beginning. So Steve goes back to the origins where I think he and Helen Beal were the ones that really helped champion uh, bringing the consortium into existence. So the VSMC exists, and as a member, there's just a lot of wonderful assets that you have available to you. Um, one of them are a lot of blog posts, right? A lot of, a lot of short to sort of intermediate length articles that have been written. Flotopia, the conference, um, all sorts of opportunities to learn. And with that, Steve, why don't you introduce yourself and talk a little bit about the consortium before we get into our topic today? Sure. Thanks, Joshua, for having me here and, and setting this up. I really appreciate uh, the ability to just jump in here and chat with you. It's uh, it's a privilege. And, um, and I love these conversations. Um, and a lot of the content that you'll find in the Value Stream Management Consortium is the result of these conversations on, you know, what is flow in an organizational context? What is the flow across an organization? How do we see it? How do we measure it? How do we think about it? How do we talk to other people about it? And that's, I think, the most important aspect of these conversations is getting used to talking about flow in language that people can understand, whether they're practitioners, whether they are uh, auditors, whether they are senior leadership, whether they're partners, or you know, they're coming to value stream management in a digital context from a manufacturing context, or maybe they're bridging that gap or, or straddling those two worlds. So there's a lot to talk about, and I'm very excited to be talking about it with you. Excellent. Um, yeah, and for those of you that are watching this live, feel free if you want to post in, you know, post a comment as far as where you're from. Um, I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. Steve is in Toronto, Canada. Toronto. We have a little, little bit of uh, temperature distance uh, separating <laughs> <us> today. <laughs> a little bit warmer, I think, where where I'm at. Um, maybe a little. Yeah, maybe a little. <laughs> So um, in the blog post, and, and we're gonna we're gonna put a link in the in the comment section in just a, a few moments as far as um, being able to get to uh, both the Value Stream Management Consortium's website as well as directly to the to the blog post. Um, one of the things, so this was the very first blog post that that Steve and Helen and Helen had done. And one of the things when I first read this that I always find so interesting is there's a quote in it that talks about value stream management back almost, a, well, over a hundred years ago, right? And so from a manufacturing perspective, you know, physical product perspective, yeah, it's 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 been around for quite some time. Uh, sometimes in some of these types of discussions, right, you, you know, you, you'll hear somebody say, oh yeah, isn't that just a bunch of stuff from Lean? Well, sure. <laughs> but from a digital product, from a software perspective, we're just not seeing much awareness with this. And so starting off with this, this first, blog post, right? Some of the things that we we see early in the year, and I think we're still sort of early enough where we see a lot of activity, right? But new budgets becoming available because there's so often, you know, annual budgets and, and annual budgets and annual funding decisions that have been made. And as you get into sort of the discussion that you and Helen had had, right? It's about setting a vision and goals. So the first thing that I wanted for, for Steve to maybe share a little context on is, right, there's a line in there where you say, I actually cringe when I hear about OKRs and KPIs, <laughs> as do I, um, <laughs> depending on the context. So what what did you mean by that? Well, there's a lot, there's a lot there, but I think that, you know, what I, you know, happy to see a lot of enthusiasm around OKRs and KPIs, I think it's better than nothing. I think it's better than 
you know, mandates and having plans kind of dropped in your lap. Uh, but I do find that it's very difficult for people to uh, leverage OKRs and KPIs. Like it's very difficult for people to do the reconciliation of here's the very highest level OKRs that are deployed by leadership. And then it's got to kind of trickle down to all the individual contributors and the middle management have to kind of reconcile it with, you know, the long-term plans that they have been forming. And, you know, the leadership tells them that they are empowered to create their own destinies to an extent, you know, there's, they're somewhat autonomous. Um, they're able to, manage their own backlogs. And then OKRs come along and say, well, here's the plan now. And don't get rid of the stuff that you had before. Keep finishing that up and make sure all that gets out the door. But now here's a bunch of new priorities and you also have to do these. And I think that's very challenging to address in a lot of contexts. And not a lot of people I would imagine have the confidence to assert themselves and say that, you know, I don't help me understand how this adds up. Help me understand how I can connect these dots in a way that aligns and, you know, make sure that the, we land the planes in flight and everything else gets off out of the gate, you know, that needs to get out of the gate. Uh, yeah. That I think is very rare in organizations as a dialogue and informed by principles that help you make those decisions and those trade-offs and decision filters that help you say, well, you know, we tend to pick this over that. So that makes that decision easy. I find there's a lot of deliberation necessary. There's a lot of agonizing over, well, like, you know, I need to do both. I need to do, and it's not just both, it's 10 things. So yeah. really difficult. And when you're doing both, or you are doing the 10 things, they're all going to be delayed to some degree, right? I mean, that's the other thing. And, and as you know, you get down a little bit further in the, 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 the blog post, right? You talk about desired outcomes, which was, which was fantastic. Right. And I think the example you use, if you're, you got somebody that wants to reduce or, or drastically cut like production defects versus, you know, another organization that is looking to accelerate time to market, right. Or increase visibility or decrease work in progress, right? Some of what are the things or what is the thing that would make a bigger impact that we're trying to actually achieve? And then how do we start taking a look at, again, you get, we got, we get this work that's kind of carrying over, but we have all this new stuff that we're being asked to do and now, which is going to be more important. And we end up with a more dynamic situation. Maybe whoever's yelling the loudest, right? And so just, we're just vast, you know, teams are vacillating mm -hmm. back and forth and what they're doing, which doesn't, doesn't help achieve these, these really overarching outcomes that are important. Well, one other aspect that I, you know, actually slipped my mind was the fact that these OKRs tend to be kind of quarterly or semi-annually, right? Where, you know, they yeah. don't necessarily lend themselves to long-term vision and planning. And they're not often kind of reconciled against the master plan to say, well, like, is this quarterly set of directives, uh, is it moving us towards where we were headed before? Or is it pulling us away from that? And what do we do in that situation? Yeah, there was a uh, an organization that that uh, I had an opportunity to go in to, to do sort of an agility health check and then just also sort of general recommendations from a, a VSM principal perspective. And so, you know, I took, I mean, it was you know, a big company and, you know, they, they have you know, publicly published financial statements. So they actually had six very, very well-crafted things in the notes to their financial statements, right? And, you know, one of them was, again, for-profit company. It was like, you know, sustainable growth and you know uh there were a whole bunch of things that were sort of packed into that still at a very high level and when i asked from you know with the thought of strategic alignment perspective like how are how are these things that i'm seeing these projects and in work that's going on how do you tie that back to some of that it, it was like well i don't know we we don't or we're not asking <laughs> right. right so there, there's always that that big disconnect like you know maybe at the top there's good awareness of some of those 
you know, things that are the, the two, three, five year horizon types of things that are the big bets, the really important things for the, for a given organization. But boy, if you try and tie some of the work from an alignment perspective and you go a little bit further down, like, you know, you spend some time with a team and you ask a developer, like, Hey, that code you're writing, how does that support like this thing? And it'll be like, what? Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, you think about this, if we're thinking about this in the lens of vision and visibility, as a result of that difficulty to reconcile, you'll get this kind of like shadow or bimodal activity where you'll have lip service paid to the high level OKRs and goals, right? Where it's like, well, let's put out the watermelon metrics and say everything's fine. And in the background, they're doing their own thing that's completely disconnected. And they're basically checking the box for leadership but they have their own backlog. They have a bunch of technical debt. They're like, they'll never understand what we have to do. Let's do it. And we'll also make them happy so that they get, you know, stay off our backs, essentially. And then you've just got essentially chaos because how do you even understand what is happening when, you know, everything seems fine from up top, everything seems fine from the bottom, but they never meet in the middle. Yeah, I love the watermelon metrics, right? Or uh, for those of you that maybe haven't heard that before, because I haven't heard that in a while. But yeah, it's, <laughs> it's green on the outside and red on the inside, right? And that goes on, um, unfortunately, far too often. So this first blog post, um, for the, all of you out there again watching this live or watching this on replay, um, you know, again, talks about setting a vision and goals, gets into desired outcomes. Um, Steve has a really nice way of talking about outcomes and dive stream mapping. Um, so without going into too much of, of the blogs that you guys can kind of read it for yourselves. Um, if you do take us up on the offer to, to or <laughs> the enticement to read it, um, after the fact, come back, post, post a question or post some, some thoughts um, so that we can um, uh, get a little more clarification from both Steve and, and possibly from uh, Helen. Um, next week, um, we are going to move on to the next blog entry, which is going to be on the benefits of visibility and transparency. Another, you know, especially that another one of these, these overarching goals, a lot of time leaderships want, they want more visibility into what's going on and we can do that in lot, lots of ways. And so we'll, we'll touch on some of the highlights of that blog post. Steve, thanks for, for, um, working to get this finally kicked off. Any parting thoughts for uh, everybody today? Well, I, I want to say thank you again. You know, you're the reason this is happening. And I, I really appreciate that. It makes it very easy for me to, to join. And, and I love having these conversations. So uh, I hope that the two of us get to have more of these conversations with new members and yeah. the community uh, as it exists today, uh, because there is a lot to talk about. Yeah. Um, and so that's something maybe we can work in in the future as well, is that as we know, we're going to kind of work through just the, again, the library of all of the great guidance and, and content that the VSMC has. If you're out there and you've read one of those blog posts and you'd like to join in on the discussion, um, connect with Steve and I here on LinkedIn, let us know and uh, we'll get you into the, the broadcast booth as it is. And uh, maybe you can share a little little bit of your thoughts. Um, in the uh, in the chat, we've also put a link to the Vice Management Consortium um, from a membership perspective. There is a really nice discount if you use the code Flow Shorts, since that's what this this whole series is going to be. And uh, yeah, consider you know what you get out of it from an individual. Even better, treat your whole team right, or bring it to if you're not in the decision making um, role or at least yet, um, bring it to one of your decision makers, see if you can get your whole company to, to have access to all the content. And with that, we will see you on the next Flow Short. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.